Can we give a crossroads welcome to our brother, Mike Masters? You need this? <laughs> well, I'm not really worthy of all that because to Christ be the glory. Can we give the Lord a biggest hand clap? He's the one. He's the one. I don't know where these people come up with all these accolades, but um, I know me, and uh, it's all about him, okay? Amen. 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 Uh, that isn't how I thought we'd start this, but I want to start it more like this. Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory through his redeeming blood. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me through his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory. Beneath his cleansing flood. And whoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is our victory, our faith in Christ and Christ alone. Amen. This psalm is about Jesus Christ the King, the chosen one of God, the everlasting. The babe born of a virgin in a manger, a prince of peace, a total stranger. The King of Kings, the Messiah, the Holy Incarnate One. Yes, Emmanuel, God's only begotten Son. He's not Allah, Muhammad, or Buddha. He is the one true God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. A carpenter's son at birth, the Son of God before the earth. He is the captain of the Lord's host. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. Anointed to preach the gospel to the poor, but yet there's so much, much more. His attitude was of mercy and love. His spirit was as gentle as a dove. He is just, meek, merciful, and sinless, forgiving, holy, humble, and righteous. He's salvation's hope for all kind. He's, he's salvation's hope for all kind. He ministered to the poor, the hurting, and the adulterous. He's a friend of the publican, the sinner, and the nameless. He walked on water. He calmed the sea. He healed the sick and made the, line, made the blind to see. He fulfilled everything the prophet said. He even raised the dead. He gave up all power and authority, become a servant, a man of humility, a savior of no reputation, that he might lead all unto salvation. He is redemption story. Receive him, and you too shall receive glory. His obedience, though, is Calvary's cross. What a price to pay for the lost. Calvary's cross, what a price. The only hope for eternal life. With thorns in his head and nails in his hand, could this be the king of kings, the son of man? With a nail on his feet and a spear in his side, could this be the one who would come to the earth from the sky? Yes, this is Jesus Christ from Galilee, the carpenter from Cal. From Ga this is Jesus Christ from Galilee, who hung on the tree at Calvary. As he grasped for each and every last breath, he said, "Father, forgive them," just before his death. But three days later, he rolled away the stone. Death has no more dominion over him now. Okay, um, <laughs> three days later, just like he said, he rolled away the stone. He rose from the dead. Christ raised from the dead. He dieth no more. Sin and death defeated by the Lord of Lords. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 And then all of a sudden your mind goes blank and you go, what do you say next, right? Gone to prepare a mansion just for you, repent of your sin, and you'll receive that free gift too. 
Jesus said, you must be born again, for it's the only way to heaven. He now sits at the right hand of the Father, the same yesterday, today, today, and forever. He's speaking to you, come follow me, and those who do will live for eternity. So take the step of faith and receive Christ before it's too late. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. He's not given us a spirit of fear. His voice is speaking to your heart right now. I know you hear. For Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And the only way to heaven is by faith and not by sight. So surrender. So surrender. And come. To the cross. And have your sins wiped away. Then heaven is the place you'll always say. For you see, Jesus Christ is the king of kings. Surrender. Repent. And give him your heart. For it is the only thing. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believe in him would not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus said the statement. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, and I'm anointed to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the broken heart, to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight of the blind, and to set at liberty those who are oppressed. To set, everybody say this to me. Set at liberty those who are oppressed. One more time, look at the person next to you and say, set at liberty. Look at him and say, set at liberty. He comes to set the captives free. Look at him in the eyes and say, he's come to bring us hope. Hope that doesn't disappoint. Because of the love of God that is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. We have hope. Look at the person next to you and say, we got hope. Look at the person next to you and say, we got victory. We have hope. We have victory. He has defeated sin and death, and we have the eternal hope. That's what we have. And now I'm going to go to prayer. Heavenly Father, I come before you, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I can do nothing apart from you. Holy Spirit, touch these people's lives today. You know exactly what they need. You can heal the broken heart. You can bind up the wound. You are the one that can set people free. You, can, you are the one who will turn the blind eyes to be able to see what's going on in the world today. But Holy Spirit, apart from you, I invite you to come and take this service over. It is your service. It is yours. Help me to get out of the way so these people can be touched and they can see the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, you're so good to us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you love us so much. What a father, God who is for us and not against us. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, the blessed hope, the blessed hope, that's what I want to talk about today. I hope you are encouraged. It's a great place to be. I believe that you are going to not leave here unchanged. Something, if you came looking and hoping today, you're going to be touched by the Holy Spirit, and you're going to leave change today. And I just see those people out there. I just want to go back and preach to them. You know, it's like, it's like you guys, it's like the old Bob Euchre thing, like, oh, hey, I got the best seat in the house, and they put them like way up in the grandstand someplace. I don't know if you remember that commercial. If you do, you're as old as I am, and that's, that's, that's really old. So here's <laughs> best seats in the house, best seats in the house. So the blessed hope, that's what I want to talk about today. Uh, Here's what's up, right? Gas is up, food's up, small businesses are down, families are divided, right? Some of our families here don't know the Lord yet. You want them to know the Lord. China's uh, fired up. Ukraine, what's up? Yeah, right, there you go. How about this one? Church is closing or having rainbow flags? Whoa. How about that we're selling marijuana at bike shops? 
I mean, come on. I mean, I thought I'd never see this day. I, the, the most radical thing I saw was when I was in high school, a kid wore an earring and wore clogs. Okay, I mean, that was it, man. I mean, that's, in my high school days, a guy wore an earring and wore clogs. We all looked at him and go, whoa, something wrong with that guy. Okay? And there was nothing wrong with him. He was just breaking out and being him because he was still a him. Hallelujah. All right? Yeah. Amen. Uh, how about, yeah, those rainbow flags that cracks me up. Aren't we in 2 Timothy 3? Uh, having a form of godliness but no power. Those churches with the flags, they got no power. There ain't no power there. There's none. There's zero. There's zip. There's nada. But isn't God so gracious that he walks amongst all the lampstands? Oh, yes. Even Laodicea. Even a lukewarm church, he walked amongst the lampstands because Jesus doesn't give up on us. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. That's hope if you ask me. Look at the person next to you and say, he ain't never going to leave you. He won't forsake you. He said it. He means it. And he's yours if you want him. That's the bottom line, though, if you want him to be there, right? Okay, so, so now we have, like, right, we've had a spirit of fear, spirit of doubt, spirit of anxiousness. Hey, thanks for such an uplifting message, yeah. Okay, oppression, depression, and recession. So what do we do? Well, I like all the young people who are in here really quick. Stand up on your feet fast, fast, fast. Move every young person here. Please stand to your feet really quick. Quick, quick, quick. Yes, young people. College, college age. Well, I like that lady's got a young heart. High schoolers, college age, high school, college age and below, stand up. Anybody that's in school, stand up. Say this after me. I do not. Say this after me. I do not. In Jesus' name, amen. You can take a seat. So oppression, depression, recession, uh, we need to speak, 2 Timothy 1, 7. I don't have a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. And then what do we need to do when we're struggling I, like I do in my office and I have some of these that are going on in my family, in my house? I'm right with you. What do I do sometimes? I just put on worship music. And you've got to worship through it. Like this one here, Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Heaven and earth may pass away, but Jesus never fails. Earthy friends may prove untrue. Doubts and tears assail. One still loves and cares for you. One who does not fail. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Heaven and earth may pass away, but Jesus never fails. That's what we need to do when we look at this stuff. We need to put our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. So where are we in the church age? Where are we in the church age? Church age is like 2,000 years. Church started about, oh, 30 A.D., 33 A.D., uh, add 2,000 years. How close is the end of the church age? That's what the apostles asked Jesus. When is this age going to end? Where are we in the clock calendar right now? Jesus' is two words. One, do not be deceived, my apostles, my disciples, my brothers in the Lord. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived right now. Stay in the book. I'm going to give you the first part of his said, and the second part he said, out of Matthew 24, the second part he said to them as he closed it, therefore, you be ready for the Son of Man is coming when you don't know it. Yeah. Hey, I give, I give kudos to the Catholic Church down here, okay, a little bit. I don't know if you read their sign. It says, uh, stay awake. Christ is coming soon. Holy smokes. I grew up in the Catholic Church, all right? And I'm like, wow, they got that on their billboard? Someone must be awake there. Someone must have. I'm telling you, God is moving in his churches, whether it be Catholic, Protestant. He is moving because it is getting close. You do the math. I'm not going to do it for you. But I would encourage you to read Matthew 24. I, what am I supposed to be done? you got to let me know. 25 after. Okay. Is that clock right? Oh, good. All right. Excellent. Okay. Be 
because I'm just getting warmed up. And I really don't even want to be up here. I want to be down here with you guys. But those guys in the back can't see me, so I'll just go back and wave to them. I, you know what? I'm so glad you're here. And I don't care if you're sitting in the farthest, farthest, farthest section. Yeah, hey, wave to these people. They're your brothers and sisters. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So here's a great verse, right? We're talking today about the blessed hope. Sorry about that, cameraman, but that's just the way it works, okay? <laughs> so, I mean, here, here's a great verse, right? The great verse is, for the grace of God which brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. Hey, folks, you got to start denying right now. If you're playing around and you know it, God knows it. He knows your heart. I don't know where your heart is today. You need to deny ungodliness and worldly lust so that we might live righteously, soberly, and godly in this present age. As, as, it's a precursor for what we should be doing. As we work towards a blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Everybody say, praise the Lord, he's coming. <laughs> Everybody said, look forward. Quit looking back at what might have been and could have been and should have been. Even you people that are graduating, don't have regrets of what you did in high school. Look forward. God's got a plan and a purpose for your life. Not to harm you, but to give you a hope. Hey, I don't know. I know you knew that the message is on hope. So you really clued in the worship team. They did a great job. Can we clap for the worship team right now? So we're talking about the blessed hope. The blessed hope today. So let's define hope, right? Because isn't hope faith? No, it's not. How do I know that? Why would God say, now these three abide, faith, hope, and? All right, hey, look at the person next to you and say, we need to show a little bit more love. <laughs> I do. I need to be more patient, more kind. I need to be more unconditional with people. Well, he just said you love everybody. You want to go minister to everybody. That ain't true. That's a lie. <laughs> you need to repent. That is not true. I know me, okay? Yeah, there are times when the anointing comes on me and I'm like, whoa, okay, I'm fired up. And you've been there too. And there's sometimes, who cares? You know, let him go to hell. You know, I'm like, <laughs> come on, can we just be really real? Come on. You look at that person in school and you're like, Oh, they're such idiots. You know, I mean, or you look at the person in your job and you say that. How in the heck could they even believe, and I'm not even telling you the presidents we're talking about, because neither of them are going to save America. Only Christ can. Yeah. Only he can. He is the savior of the Oh, hallelujah. You're right, okay. Hey, can we give Christ a big hand clap? Come on, let's clap it up for Jesus. So, none of this is in the script, by the way. I just want to let you know that. I don't even know where I am here. All right. So, yeah, hope. Hope, okay. Hope defined. So, really, folks, faith, hope, and love, and the grace of Jesus is love, right? But you don't understand. Hope is in the middle. It's the one that links faith and love. And if you don't have hope, you won't have faith. And if you don't have hope, you won't have love. Oh. See, I don't know how many people, I, I've never really heard a message on hope. I spoke one in Jamestown. It was terrible. I don't even think I gave anybody hope. <laughs> I'm serious. I was too serious trying to get the word of God across to them. Instead of letting the Holy Spirit minister people, I was like, I'm going to give them the word. How many people know, you know, if you give the word, you're going to be puffed up. And if you've got too much of the Holy Spirit, you're going to, no. I'm around the other way. If you give the word, okay, you're going to be, I don't know. But anyway, what you need is both the word and the spirit, okay? There's a cute little saying that I forgot about. I'm sorry about that, you know. But the bottom line is hope. So what is hope? And what's the difference there? Hope is this. It's defined like this. It is a serene or calm, peaceful, confident expectation in good. A serene, calm confident expectation of good. Everybody look at the person and say, with Jesus, I always expect good. Go ahead, look at somebody and say, with Jesus, I always expect good. I mean, come on. 
God demonstrated his love for us so we were still sinners. Christ died for us. Why would he be trying to give you something bad? Why would he send you on a course of bad? Oh, I'm going to straighten that person out. No, that's not our God. We, we, we do enough of our own bad. He don't do that. Our, our, our Jesus loves us. He gave his life for us. He demonstrated his love for us that we were still sinners. Christ died for us. So this hope is a peaceful, confident expectation of good. So let me, let me define the difference between faith and hope, okay? Here we're going to do because this is important. So faith is in the heart. It's substance, and it's now. What, what do you mean? Well, let me demonstrate it. Good. Got this chair here, right? It's got substance. It's got substance. Faith is about substance of things hoped for. There's got to be some substance there. So I see the substance. So what I got to do now? I got to be confident enough that it will hold me. Uh, faith without works is dead. I can say, yeah, it'll hold me, it'll hold me, it'll hold me. No, I got to do something. It's, it's in the now. I do it in the now. Yeah, I have faith, and I put my faith to action. Yeah. But the bottom line is hope is the chair's not there. I don't see the chair, but I'm hoping it's going to be there. Oh, Yeah. Who's going to have to move for that one? It's not going to be Greg. <laughs> he ain't going to get there quick enough. So I'm hoping that God, which I cannot see, is going to do it. That's my hope. My hope is that Jesus is coming. I can't see it, but that's my hope. The blessed hope, looking towards the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of Jesus Christ. I don't see it, but I'm believing in it. That's the difference. Hope is in the mind. And that's why so many people are really, really struggling. They have doubt. They have fear. They have anxiousness. Why? Because their eyes are set on the world and not set on my eyes look unto the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. Where are your eyes set right now? I can't see the hills. Oh, I can. I can see Jerusalem. Man, I want to be there one day. Let's go up to Jerusalem. That's what they were talking about. I'm looking to Jerusalem. I want to go up the hill. And my eyes are on that hill. My eyes are on the return of Jesus Christ. My eyes are Messiah coming. That was their hope. See, hope is in the mind. Based on unseen reality of the word of God. It's an unseen reality that what God's going to do what he says he does. That's what hope is. And hope where this is for the now our hope is for eternity. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for eternity. I'm looking to get busted out of this container. Hope is going to break me out of this container. Jesus is going to break me out of here and give me a new body. And, boy, I need it, man. I got two replaced hips. I don't know about you. <laughs> My brother back there where he's got his shoulders messed up, okay, he's got a messed up shoulder. So let me tell you, though, okay, real quick, I gave you a testimony about, the, about hope, right? So uh, we're having a seven-on-seven seven football league. Justice was in it. Great job, Justice. Trey, we missed you, but Justice, super job. Man, you're going to be a great quarterback at Iroquois. You're going to do a lot of great things, man. But keep Jesus as your center. Let him be your center. Let him be your compass. Because if you're playing, Justice, and anybody in here is playing athletics or whatever you're doing, if you're playing or competing or living for the audience of one, you'll always be a winner, period, no matter what the scoreboard says. You'll always be a winner with Christ. So uh, we have a seven-on-seven seven league. We did this last June. 34 teams out of 68 teams in western New York sign up for our seven-on-seven seven touch league. Yeah, clap for that. That's awesome, yeah. That's half of every football team in western New York. I know it's a God thing because Salamanca signed up to drive all the way from Salamanca to Orchard Park, drive an hour and a half for a 40-minute game, and then drive an hour and a half home. Three hours of driving for a 40-minute game. No one in their right mind would do that. I mean, I'm a football coach, and I wouldn't have done that with my team. That can only be God. They came from Jamestown, Salamanca, Chautauqua Lake, Newfane, Lockport, McKinley, the inner city, the Catholics. I mean, they were all there. The biggies were there. Lancaster, Clarence, Iroquois, Pioneer. They're all that come to this thing. And so we got our first night of our first games. And all day long, it's thundering, lightning, and raining. I get a call from the uh, football coach from Depew because that's where our first game was, first, first set of uh, 12 teams are going to play on a Wednesday night, June 1st, right? So I'm sitting there going like, faith, hope, I need all of it. 
I, I'm reading my radar thing, and you know, that beautiful thing they give you on your phone that you can know what the weather's like, right? So I'm reading it, right? And I'm going like, oh, my gosh, it doesn't look good. So we're praying and praying and praying. I get a call from the coach. You know, you know, it's, it's lightning. You can't be out there. And I go, oh, oh, hey, I'm not out there to be a lightning rod, okay? I don't want to die. Okay, I get that. Okay, isn't that, isn't that dumb, you know? I'm not that dumb. So I'm, we're praying and praying. So I start to drive over to the field. It's raining. It's not looking good. And I said this, you, Father, are my heavenly Father. You love me. What father wouldn't give his son a good gift? And, Father, um, this isn't my league. It's yours. You're bringing Salamanca. I'm not. I said, Father, your son Jesus said, I rebuked the wind and said, peace to the sea. I said, could you do that tonight? I'm your son. Could you do that, please? And I'll just believe in you. And we get there, and I get there. It's just around a corner from our office. And superintendent comes up, or not superintendent, the athletic director goes, Mike, you know, thunder is coming and lightning. Like, no kidding, really, it's been doing all day. Thank you for something I didn't know. He goes, you can't play if there's lightning. I said, well, if there's one bolt, we're out of here, okay? One bolt. He goes, okay. He leaves. Now, it's still really ugly, cloudy, and ugly, right? He sends me a text with the radar screen, <laughs> seven miles around a pew, and seven to ten thunderbolts are headed directly for us, seven miles away. And he goes, if th look what's, what's coming, Mike. I'm, okay, got it, got it. If I see one, I told you, we'll get off, right? Well, at 8.30 at night, I got my arm around Ron Luters from Williamsville North. I said, Ronnie, I go, look at that sunset. Isn't that unbelievable? <laughs> he goes, Coach, I can't be looking up there right now. He goes, I'm coaching my team. I go, no, Ron, you got to stop right now. So before each every game, I'm thanking God for great weather. I'm thanking God that there's no bolts, there's nothing. I'm thanking him. When it's all over at 9 o'clock, my assistant, Casey Kaz, comes walking up. He goes, Coach, Coach. I go, what, Casey? He goes, he goes we had a miracle tonight. We had a miracle tonight. I go, what do you mean? He goes, I didn't want to show you this. He goes, but it's 7.30. This is what my phone looked like. Oh, at 8.30, this is what my phone looked like. But you kept telling everybody we're having miracles. You kept praying for miracles. I go, well, we did have a miracle. I know. He goes, look at it right now, Coach. 9 o'clock, we're standing right here. 9 o'clock to pew, 100% rain. <laughs> You're not getting this. It was supposed to be downpouring on my head. 7.30, 8.30, and 9.30, the radar people said it was 100% rain into pew. We didn't get one drop. I, I got, I, I, I had Greg, I had the picture I wanted to show you guys. Look at me, look at the person next to say, they're all, there's always hope. There's always hope. So here's the key tonight, okay, here's the key. This scripture verse. How do we get this hope? 1 Peter 1.3. 1 Peter 1 says, Praise be to God and the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, in his great mercy. He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. you got to get this. The new birth gives us living hope. The new birth. That's why Jesus said, marvel not that you must be born again. Why? Because he knew if you were born again, you would have what word? I can't hear you. What word are we going to have? Hope. The living hope. You see, true hope is found in the resurrection of Christ. No resurrection, no hope. No Christ in you, no hope. You wonder why the world is struggling right now? Because when I'm driving, driving over to Crosswords, I see people walking together, riding their bikes, and doing everything. No one's driving their car to church. And you wonder why they're anxious? Because they don't have what you look at the person next to you and say, I got the hope. <laughs> I'm born again. I got hope. I'm full of hope. Matter of fact, I'm carrying hope. What? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Wrong thing that we're carrying. I'm carrying hope. You don't have it. You're carrying it. You're carrying hope. 
It's in you wherever you go. When VBS hits here Monday, all you workers are carrying hope for these kids. This is going to be one of the greatest VBSs you have ever had because the bottom line is people are doing everything. I said, gas is up, this is up, China's up. All that's happening, and they're going like, where is there? What's the word? Oh. You're carrying it. This is why this VBS is so crucial. You're carrying the hope of the living God in you when you receive Jesus Christ. Man, it's so exciting and amazing. I love, for Colossians 1.27, I can't get over this. It says, Christ, Christ, everybody say this to me, Christ in you. Look at your neighbor and point him and say, Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's the new birth. You are walking with Jesus Christ in you. That's why he said, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I will never leave you and I'll never forsake you. Why? He's in you. How can he leave you? And you carry that. You have one of, Greg, hang on this really quick here. You got one of two things you want to carry. You can carry this or you can carry this. Matter of fact, on Mondays when the Bills lose, when the God of the Buffalo Bills goes down, Amen. they are deflated and have no hope until next week. When we're sitting there going like, I got hope every day Amen. because I got Christ in me. No, I'm not. I'm not. Because people are dying. They're gone. But you're a carrier. This VBS, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And whoever follows me will not be in darkness, but have the light of life. Look at the person next to you say, you got the light of life in you. <laughs> oh, my gosh, we really got to hurry because I, that's just one page. You got one more page to go. 1 Peter 1.13, therefore, says this. Oh, oh yeah, i gotta, I got to finish the story of this one right here. Okay. So, so the third night, we're given the, the third week, we're given the gospel of these kids, right? And guess what's prophesied by our famous weather people? Tornado warnings. <laughs> Tornado warnings. And I'm sitting there going like, Lord, really? I, I want to say with a lot of faith, which I sometimes don't have a lot of faith, please. Okay. There's times the spirit of fear comes at me, man, and I, and I got to battle it. And I look at some things and I go, Lord, please, that, that one kid of mine, please, Lord, please. I'm right there with you. One of our guys just had to move to Tampa. A fourth of our staff just moved to Tampa because he refused to take the jab. And I'm going like, him and his wife, and I'm like, Lord, please, what are we going to do now? He's got it. I just got to relax. Why? Because my, you know. My lovely wife has this great verse, Isaiah 26, 3, and 4. It says, you will keep him in perfect peace because his mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord, for in Yahweh there is everlasting strength. you got to read the word. That word is a great, great comfort to me, that scripture verse, right? And so tornadoes are coming, right? So I get a call from Jamestown, we can't come. I get a call from Spruceburg, we can't come. Our, uh, they won't let us. I get a call from the guy from St. Francis. He goes, Mike, tornadoes are coming. He goes, Where are you, what's going on? What are you going to do? I go, I'll be at the field. Just meet me there. Guess how many tornadoes showed up? Zero. You know what? And I was praying. I go, Lord, please send it to Fredonia. <laughs> I prayed it in front of the kids that. I prayed. I don't know if Justice, you were probably not at Orchard Park that night. Okay, it was at Orchard Park. And I'm sitting there, I'm on my knees, Lord, whatever bad weather is coming, just send it to Fredonia. Now, Fredonia shows up like an hour and a half later. I go, how's it in Fredonia? It's raining cats and dogs. I go, praise God. <laughs> and I said, you know what? You know what? I'll tell you what. I love you guys so much. We're going to pray it to Dunkirk. And, and they, like, start laughing, you know. I mean, did, did that prayer really happen because I prayed that? I don't know. But I know a God that loves me. One of the coaches showed up. He says, hey, you're really connected with the guy up top. I go, I'm not connected. I don't know how much connected I am. But I know one thing. He loves people. And he loves kids. And he's for us and not against us. He wants to bring us hope. Oh, by that way, that night, Casey Kaz prayed at Amherst. It's lightning and thundering. And the staff gets out. And they go, like, what are we going to do? He goes, we're going to pray. 
So he prays, right? Just raise up his hand, praise God. Lord, please take this away. Three minutes later, beautiful blue skies. I'm telling you, we had weather miracles. Look at the person next to you and say, our God is a miracle God. And we have hope. All right. So where do we, how do we bolster our hope? And then we're going to close, and you'll be challenged. Three ways we can bolster our hope. First of all, it says this in Psalm 31, 24, be of good courage, and I will strengthen your heart, all you who hope in the Lord. I want that courage. I want that strength. So how do I get it? Well, number one, it says this, for whatever things were written before were written for our learning, so that through the perseverance and comfort of the scriptures, we might have hope. You guys are getting the word. Yeah, you got to read the thing. If you're not reading the book right now, I don't know what book you're reading. I mean, I, you know, hey, I, I hardly do any devotions anymore from people. The reason being because I need to keep my face right in this thing. My Holy Spirit is my teacher, and he's been teaching me a lot lately. He's been teaching me a lot. You, this, this is the number one thing that will strengthen your hope is the truth of the living God. Matter of fact, God says, I honor my word above my name. I don't get that, but I just believe it. <laughs> I just believe it. He honors his word above his name. That's in the scriptures. That's in the scriptures. So number one, everybody say this, word of God. Word of God. Number two, say number two. Word of God. The, Holy the Holy Ghost. How now may the God of all hope, the God of all hope, fill you with joy and peace, believing that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Ghost. You may abound. Abound means a lot. A lot of hope. So we're looking at truth and spirit. The Word of God brings us hope. The Holy Ghost brings us hope. Those are two things that we got. I'm telling you right now, folks, I don't know where you're at, but I was trying to pray in the Holy Spirit about eight years ago, and I prayed a little bit in the Holy Ghost, you know, and uh, like there was this voice that stuck in my ear. It said, well, that didn't do anything. And I'm like, God wouldn't say that to me. Where did that come from? Why would I sit here and doubt what God says I should be doing? And I keep getting hit with, no, nah, you don't even know what you prayed. And I'm like, you know what? I got a feeling this isn't from my friend. I got a feeling it's from the one who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And I'm going, you know what? I'm going to start praying more in the Holy Ghost now. <laughs> and I start praying more. And I've been praying more. And more and more and more. And as the day approaching, I'm praying and more. Because you know what? My prayer list is so long. How many people got a long prayer list of people on it? Come on, raise your hand with me. Come on, there's got to be more people praying, praying than that. Come on now. Man, we need to be praying for our loved ones. That God will answer his prayer. When it comes to souls and salvation, he's all about it. So, I'm, so Jude, right? Jude 20 says this. But you, beloved, building yourself up on your holy faith. By praying in the Holy Spirit. You want to build your faith up? You want to increase your hope? We need to pray in the Holy Ghost. We need to pray in the Holy Ghost. I, I, I can't emphasize that enough. I mean, the word's great. But Jesus said you need to worship in spirit and truth. The truth is the word. We need to worship in the spirit. We've got to have the Holy Ghost now. Number three. Okay, first one is, everybody say to me, word. word. Two, Holy Ghost. Or Holy Spirit, whichever you prefer. I don't want to get anybody mad at me here. The last one is love. Love's going to give you hope. Why? Because trials or fires or whatever we're going through produce perseverance, and perseverance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope will not disappoint because of the love of God that's shed abroad in our heart. God's love in your heart. And you sense it and know it, how much your father loves you. You'll always have hope. You'll always have hope. Um, just to wrap up, um, thank you, Crossroads. Thank you, everybody here. To Christ be the glory. We saw over 400 athletes, coaches, and one official pray to receive Jesus Christ at our seven-on-seven camp. <laughs> Two weeks later, we did a top 100. 
We didn't have to worry about the weather that day. It was too hot. We worried it was too hot that day. But uh, 91 athletes out of 91 stood to receive and confess Jesus Christ with their mouth as Lord and believe in his heart he's going to die. <laughs> Two weeks ago, we did our seven-on-seven seven JV tournament. Over 120-some kids received Jesus Christ. <laughs> Folks, wherever you go, you're carrying this hope. It's as simple as saying, for God so loved the world that he gave his own. Just give people the good news. Just start out with John 3.16. Just start out. You got, you're carrying hope. You got it. You got the light. And I know the enemy comes against you with fear, and you just got to go, you know what? Back off. Why? Because there is no fear in love. And when we have his love, and we stop loving ourselves and loving others more, you'll start sharing more. You start asking the Holy Spirit to help you. He will help you. He will help you. Now, as I'm wrapping this up, we're going to do a, I'm going to ask you this one thing here. Um, right now, do you have the kind of hope I've been talking about? Do you have? I mean, I, I, I just, I'm going to give you a question. Do you have the kind of hope I'm talking about? Do you have the victory in Jesus? Does Jesus never fail in your life? Is that the way you're living, or are you just kind of second-guessing? I don't know. I keep looking around. I, keep your eyes on him. For My eyes are ever on the Lord. Only he can release my feet from the snare. Can you honestly say you have hope and the fire of the Holy Spirit on in you right now? I don't know where you're at, but I'm going to give you a chance right now. Uh, there's three different people that are here. If you have a deep need for some more hope today, today's your day. If you have a deep need for some more hope, today's your day. Because you, if you're not born again and you don't have Christ, you don't have hope. The Bible says that, not me. It's the Bible. The Bible says it. That has nothing to do with me. Folks in the back, I, I know you're still with me. You've been doing a great job. <laughs> There's three different people. There's some of you who have no hope whatsoever because you've never received Jesus. But today's your day. You can be filled with hope. You can be filled with a new life. There's a couple of you who are not so sure of your hope. You're not sure if you're even going to heaven right now. I've been one of those guys. I've sat in bed at night, and it was only the Word of God that brought me back. Absent in the body, present with the Lord. It was the Word of God that brought me my testing of my own self, because the enemy's always after us. And the third is, you've been putting your hope in other things. We all need to change our thinking and hand this thing off to the empty chair when no one's sitting. That, that, that's who needs to get that hand off. Not your friend. Your friend needs this. Amen. Amen. You don't need another Bills game. I'm not against the Bills, please. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, though, we've got to get our eyes in the right place. We are in the final end times. And you're in one of three categories right now. And I don't know which one you are, but I just want you to bow your head for a moment and close your eyes. The Bible says this, it says in John 17, 3, that now this is eternal life, that you know the only true God. Do you know him? Do you know the only true God in Jesus Christ to be sent? If you don't know him, he says, depart from me. I never knew you. You don't want to be in that bucket. You don't want to be in that bucket. I don't know where you are. Never received, not sure of your hope, putting your hope in the wrong thing. Then he says, you know, the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And God demonstrated his love for us that we are still sinners. Christ is the only way, folks. We have to change our thinking and put all our thinking and hope in Christ and Christ alone. And I don't know where you're at today, but I want to give you the opportunity right now. If you would say, you know what, I need to increase my hope meter I need hope because I've never received Jesus, but I know without a shadow of a doubt that the Holy Spirit's been working on my heart from the beginning, and I need that hope that he's talking about. I need the hope of the Almighty God and the risen life of Christ in me.
If you're in any one of those three categories today, all I would like you to do is just raise your hand. Don't look around, just raise your hand. If you're in any one of those three categories, raise your hand, please, nice and high. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. Hands are starting to pop up. I'm looking for hands. Anyone else? I see hands there. I see hands over there. I see, yes, I see that hand. I see that hand way in the back. I see a hand over there. The Holy Spirit's working on people. Keep your hand raised. Keep your hand raised. It's great. You're, maybe you're here and you go, you know what, I need more fire of the Holy Ghost also, and I haven't really connected with him, and I need him badly. Your hand needs to go up so also because that's, he's a part of someone that's bringing that Holy Spirit fire in you, and you need that hope. You need more of the Holy Ghost. That's you. Yes, I see that hand there. I see more hands popping up. God is moving right now. It's about him. It's not about me. It's about his presence Young person, if you're here today, I believe there's a young person here that wants to make a difference on their campus or wherever they're going, but you need a little bit of fire. That young person, I don't know who you are, but I'm looking for that hand to go up in that young person that God's tugging on your heart right now, and you're going, yes, me, it's me. I'm the young person. I don't know who that is, but I'm looking. That, whole, that young person, there's someone here that wants to make a difference on their campus next year. Someone here. I see hands back in the back tent. I see hands in the back tent. Yes, I do. I see hands back there. I see hands going up. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, you may put your hands down. Now look me right in the eye right now because here's what's going to happen next. We, like I sat down in the chair. I didn't take a move. Everything, if you just raise your hand for that, you need to take a step of faith. Faith is done by works. That means you're going to have to get up and move. And I'm going to count to three, and if your hand was up, don't even hesitate. Just get to the altar. Don't hesitate. Don't hesitate. When in doubt, we hesitate. There should be no doubt right now because you're going to get a big round of applause. I'm going to count to three, and everybody raise their hand. are going to move to the front. One, two, three. Move. Quickly, 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 quickly. Start clapping. Start clapping them up. Praise the Lord. 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 There's that young guy right there. Praise the Lord for our teens. Hallelujah. Coming all the way from the back. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Anyone else? Anyone else? Please, you don't want to be left out. You don't want to be left out. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I know it's hot and I know it's time for ice cream, but they have made the best decision they can make. Let's clap it up for them one more time. One prayer always covers it. Always. It's a simple prayer of salvation. But we get that hope inside of us right now. So just pray this prayer after me out loud because it says confess with your mouth. Okay, so we need to lift our voices when we do this. Say this after me. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending your son. Jesus, thank you for shedding your blood. Thank you, Father, that he rose from the dead. So I have hope. I know. I confess that I'm a sinner. I need more hope. I need more you. Less me. I change my thinking. I'm putting my eye on the word. I'm putting my face towards the Holy Spirit. And I ask Jesus to come in, to fill me, to cleanse me, to make me whole. Heavenly Father, thank you for the free gift of eternal life through your Son. Father, I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. I lift up both my hands right now. Go ahead, lift them up, lift them up, lift them up if you can. Lift up both of them. If you can only do one, fine. I lift up both my hands now and I say, Heavenly Father, your word says if I ask, if I want more of the Holy Spirit, you'll give it to me. Lord God, John the Baptist said that Jesus will baptize you with Holy Ghost and fire. 
Lord God, fill these people with your fire. Fill me with your fire. Fill me up till I overflow. Fill me up till I overflow so I can carry it to others and bring the fire to them and bring hope to them. Father God, thank you for the three greatest gifts, the word, your son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And we pray all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Greg, you have all these people who have made a decision. I, you're what you would like to do next. You're the man in charge. Amen. Well, I'd just like to thank God. Let's just do that right now. Thank God. Praise your name, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And as we, uh, we always teach here, our relationship is not just this way. It's also this way. It's also with fellowship. You cannot do this walk alone. You cannot get to know the fullness of Jesus Christ on your own. Your salvation is individual, and it's to you, from God to you. That's yours forever. But you will not grow without being connected to a body. So if this is your home church, I really encourage you to fellowship. We're going to have 300 children on this campus tomorrow for the rest of the week. And the laborer shares in the same reward as the one who harvests. We need your help after this service in setting up some stuff for these 300 blessed souls that are going to be walking this campus tomorrow. So if you could hang around just for a few minutes, uh, many, many hands makes the work light. And you'll be not, and you think that's just physical work. You'll be sowing into the gospel that is going to be heard by these little children tomorrow. And you're going to be rewarded for that just for setting up a tent. Amen. Amen. Boy, would you like to come back every week, Mike? <laughs> no, no. What a, wow, what a, what a blessing, huh? What a standard, man. And that's hard for him to receive because he's a humble man. And a humble man is the, is the spirit that God is looking for. Amen? Amen. Next week we're going to be, I'm going to be teaching on servanthood for the next two weeks. On servanthood, what that really means. And how honors how God honors us as servants, and as we work together as servants, our church, that peck measure that gets taken off, becomes so bright that it can only attract those who need to be attracted, and that only happens is when we're working together as servants. Amen. Amen. Hey, and we have ice cream too, so there's another reason to to hang out. It's probably all melted by now. They're all looking at me. Hurry up! Hurry up! Okay. Thank you, Father, for this day. Well, boy, wow. Can all of heaven rejoice today. All of heaven rejoice today. They gave you a standing ovation, those who came up. And, uh, Father, bless us as we go. Teach us to apply the word, Father, that you've given to us, your word, the Holy Spirit, Father, and it's hope, not unfounded optimism, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.